Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to the channel. I greatly appreciate you tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, at the end of the videos, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, this video is for my younger audiences. Uh, and I'll tell you why here in a moment. But to be perfectly honest with you, some of you older guys that uh and girls that watch my channel i definitely want you to comment below especially if i forget to say anything particular to the younger audience in which that uh, i have and let me start by this when i recently um drove around to give away the PS5 in this video here, um, several of those children repeatedly asked me if I was rich. And of course I responded with no, I'm just good with money. Um, and I kinda wanna elaborate on that for my younger audience. But that's why I want some of you older guys Because I don't claim to know everything um, But if I forget something Or if you want to add something to What I'm saying Please, please, please Comment below so these younger uh, People that watch this channel Can have a, a great understanding Of how to deal with and manipulate money so I'm gonna break this up in sections. So let me start with if you're 16 to 18 years old. If you're 16 to 18 years old and it doesn't matter on whether or not you get an allowance in which you're doing chores for to earn that allowance or if you actually have a part-time job while you're in school. If you're 16 to 18 years old, in my opinion, and you can adjust this as you see fit, you should live off of only 25% of what you're getting. Now, I know it is going to be hard. This takes a lot of self-discipline in what I'm saying, but it's doable. If you are a 16 to 18 year old that's not really paying any bills, maybe not even your cell phone bill, if your parents or parent is taking care of those things, then only live off of 25% of what you're earning. The remaining 75% you're going to stack. Save, save, save. And if an extreme emergency come up, then of course use it. But an extreme emergency is not the new pair of Jordans that come out on Saturday or this fly purse that you've seen online. An extreme emergency is, is you use the money to prevent a life-changing event. And I think that's the best way if you're in the 16 to 18 group. You're watching C4 in a C8. Now back to video. All right, so now that you have crossed the um, 18 mark, the money that you save from 16 to 18, we're going to invest half of that money. The other half you're still going to keep for a, a rainy day, but invest half of what you save between 16 and 18. 
you know, I really wish I could have followed this uh, same advice when I was a little younger. However, it's now so very easy and accessible for you guys to invest your money with apps like uh, Robinhood or Weeble, which is my personal favorite. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier. Now, we're going to change our income though, and it's gonna depend on whether or not you uh, help with expenses in your home from 18 to 25, or if you are out on your own, like at college or have your own place between 18 and 25. So now we're going to transition into 50% for your expenses. Now, if you're still living at home and you're not uh, paying any expenses, then by all means, continue to do 25%. But I do realize that sometimes when you're out on your own, things get a little elevated with expenses. Or if you are in college, etc. So we're gonna move to 50%. Now here's what we're going to do with the remaining 50. When you get out on your own or have some additional responsibilities, you don't want to feel like you are just working for nothing. So, 50% is for your needs. We're going to do another 15% for your wants. When you get on your own, sometimes you wanna travel, take trips, and that is life experience um, that I believe everybody should have. You should experience some life. So if it means that you get to see other parts of your country, other parts of the world, I, I say do so. So that's 65% that's already uh, allotted for you. Now, you're going to, if you don't have any real heavy expenses, you're going to put 20% into that investment account every time you get paid as well. So we got 50% that's for your necessities, 15% that's for your wants and travel, 20% that's gonna be for your investments, and the remainder 15% is going to be for your savings. Now, here's the other things. Your savings has a maximum amount. Some people say six months of your expenses in your savings account. With the way the world works for me, and it may not work for you that way, I think three months uh, maximum is enough because in the event that something tragic happens where your job is either shut down or your income is changed for a brief moment, then I think it three months is long enough to recover from something like that. Now, and that breakdown, I think is appropriate for any individual for the remainder actually of their adulthood. Now, if your necessity and expenses increase, then you need to increase your income. And how you do that is by having multiple sources of income. And we'll talk about that here in a second. You're watching C4 and a C8 here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Let's get right back into the video. All right, so we talked about multiple streams of income. Now, to be perfectly honest, especially when you're trying to afford luxury things, you have to make sure that your income is adequate enough to where you're not house poor or car poor. We're gonna get into more detailed numbers as I come up with an, an additional video for my two year anniversary but we'll go into the numbers then. But when I was even going to purchase this car, I knew I needed to increase my income so it can still be covered under that 50% rule. So I have three sources of income. However, 
I only live on one. I live on one source of income and everything else is kind of a backup as well as additional sources of investment or to reinvest in either myself or investing into the market or property or etc. Oh, before I go any further, credit cards. You can't stay away from them, even though some people will tell you stay away from credit cards, but you really can't stay away from them because they help with your credit score, but you have to learn how to use them. I'm going to give you uh, the way I use my credit card. You can either ad adapt that to something that fits you or find other ways to um, use them. But let me, let me give you an example real quick. So I have, I have three credit cards total. Two of them are major. One, sorry, I had to get around the vehicle. One is a store card. And the store card that I have is a 0% interest card. And even though it says 0% interest, they still charge you a monthly fee. So that's just their way of working around it. They're still getting extra money out of you. So I'm good, but this works for all three of them. So when you get a credit card, I'm, we're just gonna use one credit card for example. One of my credit cards are, is um, the, the flip over date is the 15th of every month. So on the 16th or the 17th, I buy anything that I want with my credit card. By the 15th of the following month, that balance is paid off. So I do, I guess in a sense, what you call a layaway plan for myself. But it's um, it's using my credit card. And that way, you are not charged interest. And if you have the right credit card, you'll get you know 1% of your purchase returned to you. So for example, on the 16th and 17th, let's say for instance, there's something new that I want to purchase. Ah, we can go to the lights that I have installed on the front of my car. When I purchased those lights, I purchased, purchased them on the 16th or the 17th of one particular month. I think it was December. Um, they were $800. So in my expenses of my 50%, I paid $200 a week and made sure that that $800 was paid off before the 15th of the next month. That way I was not charged any interest whatsoever and I actually ended up making $8 back off of that. So what, I guess that's free shipping if you wanna look at it that way. But any which way it go, it didn't cost me extra money and it increased my credit score. So that is the only way you're supposed to use your credit card. Yes, they'll give you a 2,000, a 5,000, a 10,000, a $20,000 credit card. And yes, that's how much you have available to you, but that does not mean that's what you're supposed to use. And I had to learn that the hard way. So let me get my weekly allowance and we'll talk about that here in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the key is budget. Remember the percentages that I told you. Make out an itemized list budget for yourself. Put yourself on an allowance. This is my allowance that I have in my hand. This is what I can spend on anything that I want during the week. Um, because everything else is accounted for. I used to work for an organization and we did line items for everything that we needed to spend money on. And I continued to do that in my adulthood and personal life. So in my budget, I have of course all of my necessities that, 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 that is covered under that 50% that I spoke about earlier. But when I want just a little pocket change, I have myself on an allowance. And it's not a lot of money. 
I'm going to show you here in a second. I have myself on a $14 a day allowance. $14. Now, I know you may be going, oh, well, geez, that's nothing. But when you budget to the penny from the income that you have, you know exactly how much you will really need because everything else is covered under my expenses. I live the proverbial check to check. So, and what I mean is, of course, yes, I have a savings for emergencies and this, that, and the other. But to me, in my mind, that money does not exist. So, the only money that I have, as far as I am concerned, is $14 a day. And that, that gets me to my next allowance period, $14 a day. I don't go over that. If there's something that comes up, I make it wait. And I get laughed at quite often because I'll sit there and act like I can't buy something, but I do my best not to impulsive buy either. So those are my tips to you. Go with the percentages that I have right up here on the screen. Put yourself on a budget and an allowance. Be disciplined and stick to it. And I promise you, you'll be successful. And that's basically it. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you list them down below. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that know a little more, or if you do something a little bit different that may work for you, that could work for somebody else, please drop the comment down below so they can also get a different idea because I'm not claiming to know or claiming that my process will work for everybody. But what I do know is with the community of us, we can teach the people under us to do better than us. And that's what we're all here for. So until next time, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Hey, we'll start coming up on the two year anniversary. We'll be talking about that. Um, I'll be talking about the winner of my transition video and we pretty much already know who that is. However, we did something a little bit different with that. That's coming up too. So please like, comment, and subscribe. I greatly appreciate you guys. I know you have a choice. I'm glad you chose me. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.